the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 300, Luke 9 to 10. The ability and power to heal the sick. Jesus said that faith should move forward as far as to practice his service and showed himself as a model of becoming a good neighbor to the weak. First point. Luke revealed the conversation Jesus had with Moses and Elijah on Mount Tabor. Luke chapter 9 records the story of how Jesus sent out his disciples to spread the message, the miracle of multiplying the bread and fish, Peter's confession, and Jesus' predictions about his suffering and resurrection. Luke also records the instant of Jesus' transfiguration and how he spoke to Moses and Elijah. Jesus had a conversation with Moses and Elijah in the mountains, and this was about his death. Luke also recorded the glory of Jesus Christ. As God had already declared, this was the Jesus predicted both in Psalms and also in Isaiah. A voice from heaven came down three times to glorify Jesus. The first was after Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. The second was during Jesus' transfiguration. The third was before Jesus' public life ended and before his suffering. As such, during Jesus' ministry, God spoke from heaven. During Jesus' conversation with Moses and Elijah, Peter offered to make them a shelter. The disciples wished to stay up in the mountain for longer, but Jesus declined their request and went back down the mountain to join the people. Second point, God's mercy towards Samaria for the past 800 years was expressed through Jesus' actions towards Samaritan people. After Jesus' transfiguration, Jesus came back down from the mountains and continued to heal the people who were sick and demon-possessed. Jesus predicted his suffering for the second time to his disciples. Following this, the disciples started to argue among them as to which of them would be the greatest. Jesus took a child and then said that whoever welcomes this child in Jesus' name welcomes him and furthermore told them that the one who was least among them was the greatest. Next, we come to the story of Jesus restoring Samaria, which had been the capital of North Israel. With the fall of North Israel, they had become a mixed race nation. With their race becoming mixed, their religion was also mixed. Because of this, for the past 800 years, they were excluded by the Jews and treated very badly. However, Jesus expressed love and mercy towards them. And this had been predicted by the prophet Hosea, even before the fall of North Israel. The Samaritans knew that Jesus was headed towards Jerusalem and so excluded Jesus all the more. Here, James and John told Jesus that they hoped that Samaria would be punished. When Jesus heard this, he rebuked them. Jesus later praised the Samaritan for returning to thank Jesus after being killed from leprosy. St. John Wright wrote that after the conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman, the gospel spread in Samaria. Jesus restored Samaria fully through his great commission. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the Andes of the earth. Third point, Jesus taught his disciples that their priority should be in the kingdom of God. One day, a man came up to Jesus and said that he would follow Jesus anywhere. To him, Jesus explained the life of his disciples. Jesus explained how difficult and tedious it was 
to be his disciple. To the man who said that he would follow Jesus after his father's funeral, Jesus told him to follow immediately. In other words, Jesus explained that in order to become Jesus' disciple, their priority had to be on God's kingdom, even more so than their parents' funeral. Fourth point, as 70 elders were set up during Moses' time, 70 disciples were raised and sent out to spread the gospel by Jesus. After sending out his disciples, Jesus also gathered 70 people and paired them to spread the gospel. Jesus selected 70, similar to when Moses selected 70 elders from the community. Jesus declared his teachings for many crowds, and this was sometimes to 70, to 12, and to 3. This was not a form of favoritism, but a way of dividing up his teaching. Jesus said that sending off his disciples was like sending young sheep to wolves. Jesus then taught them the following, to not take an extra pair of paths or sandals, to not greet anyone on the road, to wish them peace in their house, to accept their wages, to stay in one house, to heal the sick, and to tell anyone who is there that the kingdom of God was near. After these people returned from their journeys, they reported back to Jesus. Jesus replied to them by referring to the word of the prophet Isaiah. Jesus taught them that their greatest joy should be the thought of their names being written in heaven. Everything else in their lives was to be filled through Jesus. After all this, Jesus prayed to God to thank him. Jesus then outlined the privileges of his disciples. Although the prophets in the Old Testament wished to see the Messiah, they were unable to. However, Jesus' disciples were able to see him and to learn directly from him, which was indeed the greatest privilege. Fifth point, to the teacher of the law who asked who his neighbor was, Jesus used the parable of the man who was robbed and asked who his neighbor was. One day, a teacher of the law came to Jesus to test him. This teacher had quite the knowledge on the laws. He was able to distinguish the 613 laws and categorize them into two types. However, what was wrong with him was that he wished to use his knowledge to show Jesus that he was righteous. Jesus therefore taught him through the parable of the Good Samaritan. In Jesus' parable, the priest and the Levites had neglected the man who had been robbed. However, the Samaritan pitied him and made sure that he was well taken care of by spending his own money. Jesus then asked the teacher again who this man's neighbor was, and then Jesus taught him to go and do likewise. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tongdok Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zhou does. The way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation. One story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do this. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in, in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tom Doc Bible is so important. The scriptures, the story, Genesis to Revelation, is the daily mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly who God made us to be. And that's why this app is so important. This app shows you how to do mouth, that God, enables God to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life. 
365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will feel that healing that comes from mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit on you as you use this app.